Okay, um, I'd like to, to direct the first few questions at any of you, any of you would, that would like to answer will be great. So <laughs> I want to first ask you what you learn and what changes you bring back into Genesis each time you go out your separate ways and then come back again. Well, I think for a start, uh, probably the most important thing actually is just the fact you've had a break from each other. You haven't spent the last two or three years working together, so you come back I suppose enthusiastic, much more so than you would if you'd actually been doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously all, all, all that we do writing and recording, it's a whole, the whole process is a learning process and everything you do you pick up new ideas. It's often hard to be specific and actually say, you know, you learnt this and you brought it back to the other guys, but uh, indirectly I think everything you do gives you a di little different perspective, especially working with other musicians. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think the biggest thing really is just, is just the change, you come back uh, fresh. But, and you, Mike Rutherford. Hmm. <laughs> but your sound is always Genesis, and I'm wondering how do you keep uh, music from other projects from seeping into Genesis? Well, we've, we just we deliberately leave them at home. You know, any individual songs, bits of songs, or verses and chorus that we might have written individually, we just don't bother to bring them in. And so, what you hear on a gen on this We Can't Dance album, for example, is is the culmination of, of two months of us just sitting in a room playing together and over a period of time forming from ideas, very small ideas, forming them into songs, be them, be them you know, six minute songs, ten minute songs, four minute songs. And um, I think the reason we sound like Genesis, you know, there's a style of course over so many years that you, you have certain things that trademarks, identifiable trademarks, which like or not, you can never really change that much. Um, you know, we are the same three people, I mean, same three people since 1977, 78, whenever it was when Steve Hackett left, and when we, we, the three of us have been in the group since 1970. Mm -hmm. So um, there's bound to be some kind of thread, but at the same time, what keeps it interesting for us is to try and make it different each time. Yes, tell me, uh, Tony, a little bit about the writing process. Well, I think Phil touched on it there, but we, we go into the studio um, with nothing prepared at all. I mean, this is to really keep it distinct from what we do individually. And we sit down there and we improvise, and this can take the form of, uh, say, Phil switching on a drum machine and me playing a few chords and then Mike playing a few notes with it. And if you, you know, you might do something that if you played it on your own might not sound very exciting, but with the combination of the particular, what the other two guys are doing, makes it something special. And then, you know, it might develop into something else. You might get a little melodic phrase on a simple chord sequence that sounds good or whatever, or you might play something which is a good chord sequence, you know, in itself. The things just all sort of tie one to another and they lead you from to different ideas. It's like, you know, you're bouncing the ball between the three of you all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of, if it, when it's working, it's a very satisfying process. I mean, it's very exciting when something sort of emerges out of nothing, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you've got no idea what's going to happen that particular day. You walk in the studio, nothing is created. You just play a few things, and suddenly you've got something at the end of it, which, which you know, is really you really think is good. And um, so I think that that's that's really the sort of uh, the sort of thing that's special about what we do. Mm -hmm. Phil, I read that you feel like some of the lyrics you have written for this album are some of your best. Why, why do you feel that way? Well, Renee, because I think they're the best. I mean, it's. Um, <laughs> You know, I'm new at this, you know, although I've been in Genesis for a long time, I really only started writing songs in 1978 mm -hmm. uh, during my great sorrow. And, um, <laughs> you know, I started writing and, and I'm kind of still getting better at it. And I just felt that this album had, um, I was pushed into certain areas, you know, I mean, obviously I write my, solo, my own stuff, you know, is, uh, you know, that's taking that aside for the moment. I mean, songs like Driving the Last Spike, and no son of mine. They go through maybe more changes than some of my songs that I that I am responsible for on my own. So um, you know, you t you tend to be sort of you challenge yourself to see if you can actually write them. And I particularly in driving the last bike is a ten minute song. You know, I, there was a lot of lyrics and a storyline that you know you sort of write as you go along. And it's a bit like writing a little mini book or something. You know, you just try and try and um, do something you've never done before. And and I personally feel that they're the, you know, some of the best lyrics I've definitely written for Genesis. Mm -hmm. How do you all determine what length of time you will be apart before you come back for another project? Does it depend on what you're doing on your own, each of you? Yeah, that, in a way, but it's, it's pretty loose. I mean, there's no sort of set pattern or rules of Genesis. Uh, this last gap was longer just because um, more was happening. Phil started acting now, it takes more time. 
Um, I think it's it's very good the wage dentists haven't got haven't got any sort of rules that you've got to have a certain length of time together and a certain length apart. Uh, this time the gap was longer and the tour was going to be shorter. Uh, but next time, who knows? I mean, it's, it's whatever it's whatever's right for us. Actually, I think you know you've got to be very selfish in this in this mm -hmm. business and do what you want to do because that's what keeps you uh, inspired. I think. Do you guys, when you have this much time away from each other and then you start performing together again, are you rusty or did, does it take a minute to get back into the groove? Well, you might think it does, but th this time it's very easy. I mean, it, it, mm -hmm. in, in, in no time at all, we were up and running. By day two, we had sort of the start of two or three songs, I think. Mm. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to, we don't go in thinking, oh, this will be easy. You know, we go in never quite knowing how it's going to be. And, uh, it's the edge, you know, you need the edge. It's so. the edge. Yeah. Now, when you completed this album, did you guys kind of look at each other and say, okay, we'll see each other again in a few years, or you, you, do you still have the tour to come now, or how is that going? Well, we still have the tour to come. We're here as well, if you think mm -hmm. about it. So, I mean, we're seeing each other. And, I mean, you know, when you, when you do a Genesis album, you know that you, you've got a sort of project that it's going to last a certain amount of time uh, together, and this will take us through till about, um, certainly through till August, maybe a bit later, we haven't quite decided yet. So you know, that's definite Genesis period, and then after that we will do some stuff away from the group. Um, and the idea is to definitely come back and do another album. Well, that's what we want to hear. All right, we're out of time. Right. Thank you all very much, and lots of luck. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you.